Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening. Let's post this, prop this up right here. It's kind of close to my face. How is everyone doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Finance Fridays. Every Friday, we are going to go live, or I should say I am going to go live, talking about how to manage your business finances, and we're gonna just pick apart different um, topics along managing your business finances. Today, excuse my appearance, I have had a week, so you guys are just getting what I'm serving, and that is a hoodie and some tights today, <laughs> and a bun, a messy bun. Um, so good evening, good evening, good evening. Um, I am so happy to be here and I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes to come on live and I'm going to position my selfie stick thing to make sure it's in the right place because I have some notes for today's topic, today's lesson. Um, excited to be here. Uh, glad you guys are all tuning in for those of you that are tuning in because today it's going to get kind of juicy. Um, for those of you that came on last Friday, let me just say last Friday's lesson was super dope. We talked about managing your business finances and kind of what that looks like. Uh, for those of you that missed last Friday's live, the replay is on my actual page. Um, it's about an hour, so make sure you guys start tuning in. Um, every Friday, we're going to be doing these calls, 7 p.m. I carved out an hour for every Friday for the um, from now until the end of the year. And so we'll be doing these Managing Your Business Finances Instagram Lives. And every year, we're going to, every week, I should say, we're going to touch on different topics alongside managing your business finances. Why are we going to touch amongst different topics? Because when it comes to managing your business finances, there's almost so many different um avenues right there's so many different income streams there's so many different reports data statements and so every every friday we're going to talk about um we're going to start with the same basics every friday and then we're going to talk about um how we can help you guys start to actually understand your business finances right when you're growing a company and now you're starting to earn revenue you're going to want to understand um what does that look like for your for yourself as a business owner and a lot of us are first generation business owners so we don't necessarily have this information right um and so over the course of the last seven years i've come across a lot of business owners that don't necessarily know what it what accounting really even is what the difference between accounting and bookkeeping is and why is it so important to um, have good funny have good money financial management because that's gonna really be the make or break to your company right there's a lot of people that can make money right um, but the difference between a hustle and a company is when you start running your company like a company and so what some of those things include managing your finances like a company right everyone wants to be a CEO I want to empower you guys to be CEOs and to start running and managing your finances like a company right like the CEO of your company um, so today's notes for today's lessons behind me so it just helps me to not get straight away from today's lesson um, and so we're gonna get started let's go um, so managing your business finances for those of you that are going to take notes, I definitely um, hope you guys take notes. So take out your pens and papers because we're going to go through a lot of information. Um, so first thing with managing your business finances, and this is kind of the almost what every business owner, uh, they the, the, the most important part that they pay attention to, right? The money coming in. And we're going to break down income and expenses every time in the beginning of Finance Fridays because it is the foundation piece of um, managing your business finances, right? So every business owner always looks at the money coming in, right? Their income streams. So over here on my left of my list for my three segments for today's lesson, says income streams. Next to income streams, I have a number one, a number two, and a number three. And so the reason why I have it numbered out is because as a business owner and as the CEO of your business owner, you need to know what are your different types of income streams. So if you have a physical product, number one, that says product, if you have a physical product, then you want to start thinking about um, 
you want to start thinking about how much does this actual one product start bringing in, right? Or if you're a service provider, like number two, it says service one, right? If you're a service provider, you may have a different menu of services. Um, you know, if you're a service provider, you may um, have service number one, service number two. Each one of those different products or services are going to bring in different revenue streams. When you guys work with an accountant and have your accountant um, and have your accounting in place and your bookkeeping in place, then they're going to be able to pull reports and pull data and pull statements that's going to give you a very detailed um, overview of how much each, a good accountant at least, how much each of one of your products or your services is bringing in. So you need to understand that before actually really breaking down other things that we're gonna talk about. So for income streams, I want you guys to write this down. When you start to manage your business finances or when you start to get your business finances life together, the number one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take into account what your different income streams are and how much each, um, how much each income stream is actually bringing you in. So it's important that they're separated so that when you later down down the line, when you're going to pull um, money to, let's say, grow one of these income streams, right? If, um, instance for here, personal tax preparation was our biggest income stream for the first five years of our business. Now we're full accounting firms, so it's kind of been switched, it's switched over to more now small business stuff. But in those times when I started to needed to reinvest, right? When I needed, when it was time to start to actually reinvest, I had to reinvest into advertising and marketing to go towards my number one income stream. If I didn't have an actual number or calculation for what was my top earning income stream, then I couldn't actually get a budget in place to be able to reinvest into my number one income stream. And so that's why it's very important, that's why we're starting here with today's lesson, it's very important to know what your income streams are. If you're taking notes, know how much the total of that income stream is bringing you in weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly. And then on top of that, it's gonna be really important to um, know what those numbers actually look like because later on, right, when you start actually managing your business like a CEO, like a, like a corporation, then you'll be able to make educated decisions when it comes time to reinvesting into your business, when it comes time to actually putting that budget together for your business. So definitely know your income streams. Um, and then after that, this is kind of why everyone, all the business owners uh, are newer business owners, and when I say new, I mean first five years. Um, so this is kind of where people always get lost in the sauce for expenses. You're definitely going to want to keep an eye on of your expenses when managing your business finances. And the number one reason being is obviously for tax purposes, right? You need to understand what is tax deductible on the expense side and also, you need to understand where your business money is going. A lot of business owners, and especially the new ones in their first five years, they only keep track of the income part, and then they forget the expense part. But the expense part is going to be your make or break, right? 90% of businesses go out of business in their first five years because of poor financial management. And that's a statistic, right? So. Well, us being first generation business owners, we have to keep an eye on our expenses and we wanna be ready and prepared come tax time with a full list of what these expenses are that are tax deductible. So I actually gave you guys a little list today for the most, um, for the most common tax deductible business expenses. So it's definitely gonna be advertising and promotion business insurance, business use of your car, business use of your home, contract labor, freelancers, 1099s, independent contractors, the guy you hired on Fiverr to do your YouTube video, all of those are contract labor, um, education, all the time, all of the things that you reinvest into yourself to learn classes, courses, um, interest, bank fees, merchant fees. Um, if, you're, if you are a, let's say, e-commerce Shopify store what you what you um, charge is not the same amount that's going to be deposited into your bank account 
Why? Because your merchant, the guy, the, 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 the square payment or the Shopify payment, they're going to charge a fee to collect the fees for you. So that's definitely an expense. Um, legal and professional fees, rent expenses, salaries and benefits, which you pay yourself. Um, telephone and internet expenses. So all of these expenses are different types of expenses that are tax deductible. So a lot of business owners, they pay attention to the income side of things, but they, they kind of always miss the ball when it comes to managing the expenses. Now, managing the expenses is really important because you need to know how much you're actually spending, right? If you are specifically a product, right? If you sell t-shirts, hoodies, or whatever it is, you need to know what your cost of your goods sold are, right? Because you're gonna probably have inventory. And so this is even more important for someone that's like an e-commerce store, someone that, excuse me, or someone that um, actually purchases merchandise and then resells it, right? Because you could purchase $10,000 worth of merchandise but only sell $2,000 worth of it. And when your accounting is in place, then that gets factored in a lot differently because you want to make sure you get the benefit of not spending the entire amount of what you, not uh, earning the entire amount of what you spend. But moving forward, the reason why we need to even know our expenses, right, and be in tune with our expenses is because we are in business to, one, earn a living, and some of us are looking to quit our nine to five and build our business strong enough so that it can supplement our nine to five income, right? So in order to do that, that means you have to build a profitable business, and that means your business has to earn a profit. And so being that your business has to earn a profit, you're gonna to wanna to know these numbers because you wanna know what your profit margin actually is. And once you know what your profit margin is, how do you increase the profit margin every month, every quarter, every year, right? You need to know where you're starting at and then you need to know where you are heading towards and get a, make a plan, an educated plan on how to get there and you, where you're gonna start that at is by understanding where your profit margin is currently right now. So what is the formula for getting your profit margin? Um, your total revenue, right, from, from all your income streams, am I getting off the camera? Your total revenue from all your income streams minus your total expenses is going to equal your net profit, for those of you taking notes. Once you take that net profit number, and then divide it by your total revenue, that's gonna give you what your profit margin is. And so I'm starting out today's lesson with reviewing kind of what we talked about last Friday because it's very important for you guys to just, just understand the foundation pieces of it. Now, last Friday I said we were gonna talk about business credit and business um, and how that, how that works on the accounting side of things, right? And so I'm gonna get to that shortly. Before we even get to that though, I really can't stress enough for you guys as business owners to make sure that you're understanding what this profit margin formula really is because this profit margin formula is going to be able to tell you how profitable your business is and it's going to give you a game plan. It's going to be the first piece to you putting together a game plan to make your business profitable enough for you to either leave your 9 to 5, be a full-time business owner, or be 100% self-employed. So you need to understand what your profit margin is and kind of what that looks like. So then, on my third, let's see, I might have to move this over a little bit. On my third section of today's lesson, we're going to talk about business credit. So there's a lot of hearsay on the internet about business funding, business credit, getting funds for your business. And yes, you definitely want to get funds for your business. But I want you guys to understand what that looks like on the accounting side of things, right? And for a couple different reasons. On the accounting side of things, you want to understand um, what are you going to do with this business credit or these business funds that you have now accumulated, then you're gonna, in order to make an educated plan, your kind of income streams and expenses need to be in order so that you can make an educated plan or an educated game setup for what you're gonna use the business credit funds for. In this case, 
um, most people, they start off with just business credit cards. When you have a business credit card, then you have a credit card that you're able to charge whenever you need to buy supplies, advertising materials, pay insurance, whatever it is you need your business credit for. Now, on the accounting side of things, we know that when you purchase advertising or when you purchase materials or you purchase or you pay salaries or contract labors, on the accounting side of things, we know that all of these costs are tax deductible and that they get included on our profit and loss um, statement, they get included as expenses. Now, when you have a business credit card and you're charging all of these expenses on the business credit card, those don't, those don't classify as tax deductible yet until you actually pay that business credit card. So now it's important for you to have your accounting in place or to work with a good accountant because she can, she, he, CPA, whatever, can actually guide you into letting you know how you should spend your funds and also how you should pay down your debt. Now, let's say I racked up $10,000 worth of business credit. Now, it's not gonna reconcile on my general ledger on the accounting side of things until I actually make those payments to pay down that $10,000 debt. So if I carry that debt over into the next year, then those expenses aren't going to be reconciled until the accounting on the next year. Now that's important for a couple different reasons. For you guys to get the tax benefit side of things, you're going to need to make sure that these actually are, those expenses are actually going to classify and reconcile for the said tax year that you're currently in now. Right now, our tax year, will, well, not right now, but our tax years go from January 1st to December 31st. So if I had that $10,000 credit card payment, if I had that $10,000 business credit card, maxed it out, and now I have $10,000 on it, but I don't actually pay it until January of the next year, I'm not going to get the tax benefit sides of that. And it's also going to be an outstanding debt. Now, in many cases, when using business credit and business funding, it could be very helpful for your business. Um, on the other day, I was on live and I told a little bit about my story and um, some of the losses that I took when building this business. When building this business, I purchased a franchise and the franchise deal did not go through, so we ended up losing $25,000 to that deal. Back in 2014, I was 25 years old. And moving forward, I also started with a partner and me and him split in 2016, two years later, and we split in 2016. When we split in 2016, I then had to do what's called a buyout and buy out his percentage of what he owned of the company. At that time, we had to do the accounting to even see what the evaluation was of our company, another reason why accounting is so important. And then on top of that, I ended up being negative myself personally as an entity because I took all the money I had, one through legal fees, um, through uh, two through the loss that I had just purchased the franchise location from, and then three I had this buyout, and then I had four I had to pay lawyer fees and legal fees to kind of get me out of all of these things, right? All of these things that I had got myself into being a first generation business owner and not understanding how business really works at that time, right? Fast forward, in 2017, I, I was needing funds. I needed funds to run my business, I needed funds for salary, I needed funds in my industry at that time. Our, in our, our current business model was 85% seasonal. That means that 85% of our revenue was only made in the first four quarters of the year. Being that it was only seasonally revenue, when I move forward, then what happens after that was that uh, I had we, you have to carry costs for another eight months. Sum it all up, at the time I was able to get $100,000 in business funding through different banks, and so specifically two different banks, I got two lines of credit, and I was able to then reinvest back into my business. At that time, once I took that business funds, I had to come up with a plan of how to 
reinvest that capital back into my business. And how I was able to reinvest the capital back into my business was I had to make an educated plan for where that business funding, right, was going to actually go. And so the business funding went towards operations and it went towards marketing and advertising in order to be able to grow our company. At that time, using those funds was make or break for me to actually scale my business and also get us back afloat. Now, the reason why I'm even mentioning this story is because when we start talking about business credit and business funding, it's very important that you guys don't just put yourself in debt of 20,000, 10,000, 5,000, 50,000, 100,000, and you actually have an educated guess on how you're gonna use said funds, right? You're gonna wanna use said funds in a way that you actually have a game plan for these funds. And so in that case, I knew exactly where to allocate the business funds to and kind of what to be able to spend it on. Now, the reason why I was able to know where to allocate the funds to is because at that time I had proper accounting in place. And the proper accounting would really helped me to make sure that I didn't fumble the bag, right? Because if I did get a hundred at that time, hundred thousand dollars in business funding, then that hundred thousand dollars really changed the atmosphere of my business. But I had to make sure if I was going to invest a hundred thousand dollars back into my business, then I had to have a plan for how I was going to make that hundred thousand dollars back. And then also multiply that $100,000. So when we talk about business credit, business funding, it's great. They're great assets to use to your company. And I just gave you guys my story. But on top of using that, using, the, using that for your company, your accounting has to be in place so that you can make sure you're allocating the funds to the proper place where it needs to actually be allocated. And the only way that you're going to be able to do that is if you actually have your accounting in place or you have an actual plan for your business, right? For what the funds are gonna be. At that time, we were able to spend the $100,000 in our business, get back the $100,000 within one year of time, pay and pay off the line of credit completely. Now, we were able to do that because we had a set structure in place. And then we were also able to do all of that within a tax, one tax year, so that on top of paying back down our debt for our balance for that year, we were also able to still get the tax benefits for actually expensing all of those expenses. Imagine we weren't able to get the tax benefit for $100,000 worth of expenses. Now, that would be very crucial to what it, what it looked like compared to what the revenue we were making that year of our business. So it's very important that if you're going to start to go look for business credit or business funding, you need to already start thinking about, is my accounting in place and what am I going to do with actual funds to, number one, increase my income streams, number two, expense it on something that's going to bring me a return a a ROI, and then number three, just to tie it all back up, and then number three, increase my profit margins, right? It's going to be really important for me to increase my profit margins because that's going to be what's going to actually build my business, right? It's gonna take me from here, let's say level one, into level two, into level three. Increasing profit margins, increasing our revenue, minimizing our expenses. Really building a lean business model is gonna be really important in this area of our, in this time, right? If, if we're building a business, and a lot of us, you know, we want to build a business and be business owners full time. So if we want to do that, right, build our business and build our businesses full time, then we need to have a um, strategy for if we're going to acquire business funds, what that actually looks like. And how are we going to expense that into our business that's actually going to bring us a return on investment on that said funds. Excuse me, in the example that I used earlier, in 2017, that $100,000 that we were able to acquire for business funding actually made a big difference in allowing us to grow our business. And so it was very important that there was a strategy put in place prior to receiving the funds because we needed to make sure that um, the funds were allocated correctly and then we needed to make sure that we were going to be able to not just carry have to carry over the debt from one tax year to a second tax year so we definitely did that as well so 
there's a lot of reasons why you need an accountant by your by your side and this is the main one because they're going to be able to while you're trying to earn more revenue and increase your revenue streams your accountant is going to be able to on the back end of your business tell you hey we're overspending on this let's minimize that they're going to be able to put a budget into place so let's say at that time if I had an accountant um, at that time, then what would have happened was they would have given me a plan for what the hundred thousand dollars was actually going to do for my business to bring it back all around, right? And so when we start talking about large amounts of numbers like that, it's very easy to spend a hundred thousand dollars, you know, um, and and especially in this business world, right? It's very easy to pay employees and 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 spend money on marketing and spend money on ads, and it's so money goes so easily. What is hard is keeping the money into your business and having a good strategy for reinvesting it back into your business, right? It's important that we reinvest back into our business, but also we need to make educated guesses on how we're going to reinvest back into our business and what that looks like on the back end. So your accountant on the back end will be able to tell you, hey, you have this much of debt, make sure we pay off, let's make sure we pay off X, Y, and Z. Pre, uh, prior to the end of the calendar year or the end of the tax year so that we can make sure you get the tax benefit sides of things. So it's really important to do that. Um, and so when we start talking about business funding and doing things that's going to be able to increase our profit margins, and for those of you that are tuning back in later, we spoke about our profit margin form, uh, profit margin formula. We want to know what our total revenue is minus what are our total expenses, and that's kind of going to give us our net profit. Once we have the net profit number, then we're going to divide that by our total revenue, and that's going to give us our profit margin. So when we start talking about um, trying to increase our profit margins and then getting some business funding to do so, then we're going to want to make sure that we are managing the business fundings, right? You can use bank money to build your business and scale your business 100%, but you need to understand how money actually flows in your business first. And two, if you have an accountant by your side, it'll be a lot easier to make sure that whatever you know, other people's OPM, other people's money, or whatever the bank money you have, you want to make sure that you manage it in a way that you can be able to see an actual return on investment. And the best way to do that is to have an accountant on your side, by your side. And so, for those of you that don't know, my name is Carmen Mohan. You should know if you're on here or re watching the replay. And so us over here at Straight Tax, we are um, a virtual tax and accounting firm that we can help all 50 states. We want to help you guys do the same with scaling your businesses. And so for those of you that don't know, um, you, you guys can contact us, do a discovery call, and see kind of where you are now within your business and how you can position yourself to actually scale and to actually grow. Hi, for everyone that I missed. Hello, hello, hello. Cultural currency, I like that. Overheads too. Hello, hello, hello everyone. Sorry, it's hard to read and do this at the same time. Um, I don't like to get caught off track, but yeah, so just to bring it back, um, the reason why all of this needs to be in place is so that you can make sure that you are making educated guesses when investing into your business and also make sure that everything aligns up perfectly because that's how you set yourself up to actually win. That's how you set yourself up to um, actually build and scale your business. Making your first six figures in your business is going to be hard. But now when you made that first six figures, 
keeping the revenue steady and keeping your expenses low is even harder because the more money you make tends to be the more money you spend. Now you want to make sure that your business has you know a healthy profit margin and so you want to do that by making sure that you have as minimal expenses as possible with as less overhead as possible trying to make as most revenue as possible. But you won't know that until your accounting is in place and you have your income streams like we talked about in the beginning of this slide, you need to know what are all your total income streams, what are the total amounts that they're, rev that they're um, generating, that will be able to give you a better plan for how you're going to be able to use said funds or funding in this case, right? We talked a lot about business credit and business funding. This um, specific live and how that actually plays out on the back end of the accounting side. You're definitely going to want to make sure that you actually keep track of what these funds are so that you can be able to make an uh, educated guess on how you're going to invest the funds. Let me give you an example. If I was a um, e-commerce store and I sold you know, um, a couple different shirts, right? But let's say for this example I had three hoodies and my hoodie number one says I don't know, fly girl, hoodie number two says something else, hoodie number three says something else. If I tracked these products, right, all three of them, I will know that my one that says fly girl generated the most revenue. So imagine if when now it's time to go purchase my inventory, I didn't have the, that set income streams actually uh, calculated to know what my total figures are. So let's say when it was time to go buy inventory, I ordered more of all three hoodies. Now, what I could do with my accounting in place is order more of the hoodie that's actually bringing me in the most revenue, then invest some of that uh, revenue that's coming back in to making a similar hoodie for what actually I know my target audience actually buys. And that's when the, the data and the accounting come into play to help make you make educated decisions on what you're going to reinvest into and what's going to help bring you back the most revenue or the most return on your investment, right? So all of these things, when we start managing our business like a corporation, these are the things and this is the way that we have to start strategizing our brain. And it really matters if our accounting is in place because the accounting is what's going to give you the data to make the educated decisions. So, um, we're gonna wrap up soon. For those of you who just joined, we are talking about uh, managing your business finances. Today's Finance Fridays. Every Friday we will be going live and doing these lives. This uh, specific section, session, we talked a lot about uh, business credit, business funding, and what that looks like on the accounting side of things. So it's really important you guys tune in. If you missed it, watch the replay. I'm going to post it. If you have any questions or you're watching the replay and have a question, DM me the question. I want to hear all your guys' questions so that I can next week be sure to even bring it back up and answer the questions through our lives. Consider this free sessions. And just a gentle reminder, guys, everyone's tax situation is different. Everyone's business is different. So a lot of the information we're going to talk about through these Finance Fridays is going to be generalized information. None of this information is specific to you or your tax situation. Until you jump on a discovery call with us here at Straight Tax, we won't be able to give you exact information that's going to pertain to your financial situation or to your tax situation or to your business situation until we can actually break down what um, your specific financial situation is. So again, all this advice is all of this advice is generalized, and I want you guys to keep that in mind that uh, an accountant can't really help you and give you exact specific strategies until they know your specific tax situation. Everyone's tax brackets are different. Everyone's household income is different. Everyone's tax situation is different. So you want to make sure that you do sit down with a trusted accountant to get your life and your finances straight. And always make sure your personal finances are in order before you start looking to try to manage your business finances. You got to do step one before you do step two, guys, okay? So any questions, watch the beginning of this live, leave me questions, DM me the questions. I want to hear all the questions. Um, I think today I talked a little fast, so maybe next Friday I'll try to slow it down a little bit. Uh, but every Friday, same week, same time, from now until the end of the year, I will be doing this Instagram Live 
Finance Fridays. So make sure you tune in because I'm giving you guys not only my seven years of experience in running my company, um, but I'm also giving you experience that we've learned from helping other business owners manage their company as we more so trans transition to a small business advisory firm, right? Um, taxes and accounting is great, but where my passion is and where our firm is going is more of a small business advisory firm. I am very passionate about helping other minority small business owners do the same thing I did and scale to seven figures. So I definitely want to help you guys do that, okay? For now, it's 740. I'm out of breath and I'm going to go now. Um, but if you have any questions when you watch the replay, make sure you DM me. I answer all DMs. I'm very, as long as it's not weird, I'm very, very responsive on social. Um, so if you guys have any questions, make sure you um, watch, watch the replay, DM me your question, and meet me here next Friday so I can answer your question. <laughs> all right, well, catch you guys later. Bye.